What if solving one environmental crisis means permanently damaging one of the last untouched ecosystems on Earth? New deep sea mining research suggests that's exactly what may be happening. More than 40 years after an early mining test, the scars on the seafloor are still clearly visible. And now, new studies from the Pacific show animal populations dropping by more than a third in areas disturbed by mining. Today, I'm breaking down what these studies found and why the damage may last centuries. To understand why these impacts may be so long-lasting, we need to start on the seafloor, in a place called the clarion clipperton Zone. It's one of the most heavily targeted regions for deep sea mining. As global demand for minerals used in green technologies grows, debate continues how best to meet it. Some experts argue that improved recycling and a circular economy could supply much of what we need. Others are turning to the deep sea. But mining these environments comes with serious risks, from decimating microscopic sediment bacteria to impacts on animals like whale sharks, manta rays and cetaceans. Deep sea mining is especially contentious because it targets areas like the abyssal seafloor, hydrothermal vents, mid-ocean ridges and seamounts, habitats that host unique biodiversity and are still poorly understood. The region we know most about is the clarion clipperton zone in the Pacific. Here, polymetallic nodules support long-lived corals and crinoids while surrounding sediments are home to worms, crustaceans and mollusks. Mining threatens these habitats by removing nodules, compacting sediments and creating large sediment plumes. Recently, two new studies from the clarion clipperton Zone were published. The first one examined seafloor impacts before and after a mining test. Over two years, researchers collected 80 sediment samples containing more than 4,000 macrofauna specimens. From this, 88% of the specimens were identified, resulting in a total of 788 species. They found large natural fluctuations in animal abundance, likely driven by climate-related changes in food supply. But even after accounting for this, mining caused a clear impact. Animal density dropped by around 37%, in areas directly disturbed by mining equipment. Because most deep sea animals live in the upper few centimetres of sediment, physical disruption of this layer has severe consequences. In our mind control areas, species densities stayed the same or even increased. The study only focused on sediment dwelling species and didn't take into account impacts on nodule dependent organisms, so the overall effects may be even greater. Researchers now want to understand just how long recovery might take. Another study offers a clue to this question. Scientists revisited a decades-old mining test site and found vehicle tracks still clearly visible after more than 40 years. The nutrient-rich surface sediment had not regenerated and many larger habitat-forming species were still missing. Recovery appears to be extremely slow, potentially taking centuries meaning these mining scars may be effectively permanent. The second new study I'm going to tell you about looked at mid-water plumes and their effects on the ocean's oxygen minimum zone, a low oxygen layer that shapes where mid-water animals can live and feed. Some mining companies plan to discharge waste directly into this zone. The study found that these plumes replace natural, nutrient-rich food with nutrient-poor particles. While these animals may consume the particles, they provide empty calories with far fewer essential amino acids. Up to 53% of zooplankton and 60% of micronectin in the clarion clipperton zone could be affected. Because these species support tuna, seabirds and marine mammals, and help transport carbon into the deep ocean, the impacts could ripple through food webs, fisheries and the global carbon cycle. Amid all this, there is some hope. Norway's new government has announced a halt to all deep sea mining in its Arctic waters until at least 2029. 
cutting funding for seabed mineral mapping and reversing its earlier push to lead Europe in this industry. Environmental groups are urging Norway to go one step further and join 40 countries calling for a global moratorium on deep sea mining. It's hoped that Norway's move could influence other nations, such as the US and Japan, which are still pushing ahead with deep sea mining plans. But globally, political support for deep sea mining is fading fast. The industry hasn't started anywhere yet, and scientific warnings about biodiversity loss and ecosystem disruption continue to grow. The deep sea is one of the last places on Earth that still feels untouched. It's a world that has carried on in near silence for millions of years, but studies like these are reminders that our actions can leave marks that last longer than our own lifetimes. As we race to solve one environmental crisis, we need to be careful not to create another in a place we barely understand. Thank you for listening to this episode of Salty Sunday, and if you enjoyed it, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends.